uh, because we are moving now into, well, we have been moving now already into the next section, uh, muscles and bone section, right? And I don't, ex I don't remember fully what we talked last Monday, uh, but I, uh, we, we worked on the skull, we worked on the facial muscles, we've done some axial joints, axial skeletal and joints. How, how was, is any questions on that front for you guys? Anybody or feedback? No. How, how, how is it going with the axial uh, skeleton and the joints? You guys, no questions on that? Well, then what we do is we go forward to this week. And this week we look at the second part of the musculoskeletal system, the axial part of it. Um, I mean, the appendicular part of it. And the appendicular part is the upper extremities and the lower extremities. So there's the arms and the legs. And so we're looking at the bony terminology of that. And um, 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 you have the term list, right? So what you do with this, again, is watch videos, go through the booklets. Hey, by the way, how, how do you like the, how, how are the booklets? Are they useful for you guys? <laughs> no feedback. Okay. Uh, so I assume if not, they are useful. <laughs> no, they're, they're use they're useful. It's just sometimes they do get like for the most recent one. At least for me, it was a little bit complicating because it's it's a lot of remembering with the bones, yeah, and yeah. you kind of have to really really uh, with the videos itself. It was a little bit more complicating with me because it wasn't as straightforward. Where the only we, the only way for us to actually point pinpoint exactly what needs to be labeled was you had to watch the video or you had to watch the the lecture that you gave in order to actually know exactly what needed to be labeled off the term list that we were given oh but you, you on the term list you have all the terms i want right correct and then um did you watch um but you're saying you needed to watch the videos to know where those things are no i just feel like it would have it's if you didn't watch the videos, you would be a little bit lost to actually know exactly because a lot of the, the, the labeling was a little identical to the other things that you shared because there were certain uh, terms that kind of were in the same position, but you really had to watch it to really kind of distinguish oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly where they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that makes sense. Well, you know, the, 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 the booklets are really a companion with the videos, right? Kind of. Correct. That's kind of because I, I essentially gathered all my uh, PowerPoints together and made booklets with it to have some visuals. But the reason I'm asking is because I'm, I'm actually creating a class without booklets now, where it's all online. And so I'm a little concerned that, that you know, it's a little, then, then something's missing. So that's why I'm asking that question, you know, uh, uh, in some ways to-, to... I, I actually wanted to give us feedback. <laughs> yes, please. Um, yeah, I, I actually, um, I really like your teaching style Okay. <laughs> because, um, it's not, it, you don't give a lot of pressure on due dates <laughs> and, uh, I like the repetition that, yeah, how, how, uh, the pr previous person said it's the question, the questions are identical. So mm -hmm. you watch the lecture and then you do the questionnaire or uh, the the quiz mm -hmm. and the questions follow exactly how it was in the lecture mm -hmm. so you kind of repetition and you start remembering oh this is it and the, the questions are not very confusing or uh, kind of try to make you overthink something <laughs> So I thought it was very, very useful. And then when, when I did that final test, it was pretty easy mm -hmm. um, because I, I remember a lot of the, the material. So I like that it's not very tricky. That actually worked for me that I actually uh, remembered the material. And yeah, I think, and the booklets were very useful in my opinion. Okay. 
Okay, okay. No, good. Yeah, no, I, I try to make that as a repetition thing because exactly that, right? It's, 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 a, it's a lot of info, a lot of new info. And if we massage it in our head a few times uh, with different activities, uh, then it, you know, it sticks better. Um, the other thing that I still want, I always want to point out are these FII videos, uh, because in there, what I have done is, uh, it, it, you know, if you, if you learn that way, I basically done all the videos. Uh, I, I solved the quiz questions in the classroom. Um, and so then, then if you have a problem with the quiz question or so, if you look at that video, uh, these integration appendix, I mean, these FII videos, then you, you get the, the question, then you get a whole different level again uh, where I talk about it. So if that repetition works, then that's potentially something that's uh, useful for people. That's why I started putting those in there. Um, yeah, I'm a little nervous when I start creating this class without the booklets. <laughs> I'm, 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 I need to talk about it. So that's why I'm asking these questions too. So thank you for that feedback. Um, is there anybody else with some feedback on that? Um, I actually, I like having a booklet and I mean, I don't really want to like do read it all online. I like, having, I like having a book. Right. 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 And, um, I, I like, I think that's, that's part of the, the thing too, you know, having something physical, tangible to write on. And so it's kind of uh, what I've learned over the years that, you know, when the tablets first came out, everybody came with a tablet to school and then they kind of disappeared a little bit because I think there is something that has to do with having a physical thing in my hand. Um, uh, that's, that's what I, especially for material like that, that we need to work over and over again. Um, and yeah, visuals, of course, are, are great. Those are my friends for the most part. And that's how we, um, that's how we can visualize. It's, it's really a visual medium, the body like that, you know, tactile and visual. So um, um, more, more feedback? I have some feedback. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Allison. Oh, are you sure? Um, I was just going to say I like the booklets. I'm, I'm old school, so I appreciate having something to refer back to um mm -hmm. especially i don't know something physical tangible that you can see the, all of the diagrams are really great just having something in that's all together i mean i take i take pretty rigorous notes but um the pictures are key too to having yeah. especially with with everything versus trying to look through the, the modules and trying to go back i don't know that's just my i i, don't, I would be a little lost about the booklets i think mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's my feel i have an auto class in merced and i that one i do without booklets <laughs> so, because it's it, it uh just that's how they wanted it there so well we're all we're all kind of learning with this online stuff you know these online classes is is a new format a little bit um i don't know if you guys take auto classes how the experiences are from class to class with doing it online Um, and then Eliza was on there too, right? Um, it's Alicia. Oh, Alicia, sorry. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to say in the video, uh, I, you know, I like it. I, I wish I was there in person looking at it and feeling that skull and whatever, but I know, you know, but it's really good for not having that. The only mm -hmm. thing is that um, I wish that if, if if, if you can, I don't know how it works technology wise, but to add the um, text with the name of what you're pointing out in each, you know, for each thing that you are pointing out and maybe mm -hmm. it could be like highlighted a certain color if it's on the term list and a different color if it's not on the term list, because I use the video a lot to find all of the parts. I mm -hmm. honestly didn't even realize that booklet two <laughs> went with that when I did most of this assignments and now I feel really silly. So maybe that would have helped me, but I kept thinking like what I have to rewind and rewind and rewind. And it's not easy to rewind on YouTube. You know, like you can't just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that problem too. You don't have a 15 second back button. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So it's it was, crazy sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So it was just sort of like, because sometimes it was just hard to hear which one you were on or mm -hmm. you're you're pointing out one thing but you were referencing back remember the you know 
this part and that part and they were all close together so i was like wait which part which part was he pointing yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. now mm -hmm. so so i know those videos are old and i totally appreciate them i just thought like if if you're doing updates that might be a way to go no I, and i and i am planning on doing a new version of it at some point in the future uh, uh in the next year or so. i mean <laughs> it will take so much time that's the thing right um right. Do things sure. like that. so that's why i'm so grateful i actually did these in-class videos before covid uh, for some reason, I did that, <laughs> and then COVID happened, and so I have a lot of material. So thank, at least that, uh, I yeah. felt. Um, uh, no, that's great feedback, and I will, um, I will, I will take all of that in me, and then you know, uh, when I make the next version, to to try to integrate that better, or or at least you know, focus on that like that and slow it down a bit. I was just starting to teach when I made those videos, I think. Um, one of the things uh, I wanted to point out to you in, in the booklet two and three, which is what we're working on now, on the last page, you have um, extra material list uh, on, the on the infold, basically, of those two booklets. Um, and there I have anatomy cadaver videos. I have, uh, uh, and I have muscle chart and muscle flashcards. Um, and I wanted to show you that real quick. Let me see where the heck did I put that now? Hold on. Stop to share. I'm in a different, I need to go to Google here. Um, and there we have that. So the what I have here is I created, when I studied this material myself, muscles, and in my, in my regular life, I work uh, with muscle a lot. I do body work and chiropractic. And I work with a technique that is very sub subtle and needs to really be very accurate to what we're working on. So I clipped a lot of muscles uh, on a cadaver uh, format where, where, you know, like a few, not long, like a half a minute to a minute. And it explains exactly where the muscle goes with attachments on the bone and what it does. And if you listen to this guy, he's heck of boring, but he's really, Arch of the really atlas exact. to this area on the occiput. Rectus cavitus major. See that that's sort of the way he talks about it. So very, very, um, uh, and that you can find that and you can scan your code on uh, muscle cadaver videos, which is on that last page. And if you scan that, you get to a, um, um, uh, a folder on my Dropbox. And I made a, a catalog of all the muscles because you got to give them names. And then I made all these names, you know, scalenes, sternocleidomastoid, longus capitis. So some of those guys you are gonna learn coming up in a little bit. So I just wanted to point that out right now uh, as we talk and, you know, talk about clarity things. I don't have that for the bones per se, um, but I also have videos on that, um, on that uh, last page that says anatomy cadaver videos and those videos are regional so you can look at those somebody else did those and he gave them to me uh, and you can look at those and sort of learn all the anatomy of the neck for example or of the shoulder and so that's possibly something interesting to look at and just have a have a you know as as additional material for clarity's sake um, uh, that's why i thought i pointed it out I know this is already muscles and we're still on bones, but we're getting into muscles real fast. Um, and so we will have to, you know, tackle those as well. Do you know what I'm talking about on those, where those are in the booklets? Is that on the last page you said? On the last page, on the of booklet of booklet two and booklet three. I did it two times. Oh, okay. Because so, I already scanned them and they just okay. There's like four uh four uh five. Yeah. Just scan right. Okay, five little boxes. Yeah, those five things. Just go and scan around a little bit. They mostly when we get into the muscles, so we're a little ahead of that part, but I wanted to point it out so I don't forget. Um, um that might be useful as additional information. Um it helped me tremendously. I have a few things there. Just check that stuff out. Uh, to take a 10 minutes or so um and then the other thing this week what we're going to do uh wait this is not this week this is this week right 26 yes what we're going to do is we, we're going to just keep working through the muscles i mean the bones and the landmarks 
and do another coloring, label coloring thing. And then this week, we're also going to do a posture analysis. And so in there, you have that handout um, in, your, in, your, in your health kit. And in there, I want you to basically take, your, um, take a, a few pictures of yourself or, or have somebody take ideally. Uh, of you and, and, and analyze what is your posture from the front, from the side and from the back. Um, and I've described that in there. You put some, some dots on, you put, you know, a little scotch tape with a little, little color paper or so, put it on a few spots that I outlined and then take a picture and then look at those dots and say like, oh, my head is all tilted. Wow, that's kind of interesting. And that's, you know, looking at the posture. Uh, and so I want you guys to work your way through that, especially as we work uh, through the bones, because the reason why posture is important really is because we're in an environment of gravity and, and in gravity, everything goes down. And if let's say your head is really forward, your muscles at the back of the head have to really, really raise that head up that it stays on top of the shoulder and, and, and doesn't fall forward because gravity wants to push it forward. And so if you're actually having a posture where your head is more over your shoulder, you need much less muscles to contract to, 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 you know, to have that be in that position, head in that position. And therefore, at the end of the day, for example, you're probably going to, people are going to be less tired. Um, we, we, I felt that a lot with people in COVID in the beginning when like, oh, I can work on the couch, right? And it's all nice in the beginning, but at the end of the day, everything kind of hurts because it's not a, good working posture. And so I want you to work through that this week in addition to what we're, uh, uh, what we're doing with the regular material, just sort of to integrate what we're learning right now. And so that's one thing I have for this week. Uh, well, actually it's the, really the only thing I really wanted to talk about, except to also, again, out, point out the, the test two videos and review material uh, that you can start looking at at these videos as well because these are just basically pointing to the structures that are going to be on the test and the other thing there is pictures you saw that i pressed on that pictures underneath the videos and what you get in there is you get visuals without any labels or anything on there of the models that i use on the test number two you see that? I believe somebody has a question. In, oh, on the yeah. Chat. Ask, if you have a question, just shoot it out and ask it. Do not it, just interrupt me because I actually can't see the, the text. Thank you. Yeah, what's the question, please? Uh, I just had a question about coloring. I know that on the when labeling, there's a couple different places where you can color. I've only colored one spot mm -hmm. just to label. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes, okay. I need to only very, you know, just label each term one place. Okay, thank you. That's all I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, and I mean, you know, and I, ideally, I mean, in a, you know, also potentially, you know, in, in a class that I don't have the book, I'm going to, you know, tell you guys to start Googling images and, and, and copy paste them onto a document and make your own kind of atlas that way a little bit. The other thing, actually, thinking about that, I think I have that still in your class, is resources. Let me make sure I'm giving you the right info here. Resources under student orientation resources. There is links to anatomy atlases. And I look at this. I got multiple anatomy atlases that you can click on and, and get a freaking online copy of a 700 page book or 800 page book. So see, I go there and then when you go down, it takes a little while, but then you get to the images. So those are really very detailed. This is what we use, you know, when you go to med school, you get this book. Come on, show me, show me some, show me some anatomy. Well, no, not necessarily all of that. But see, that's maybe you can visual, maybe you can sort of appreciate. Come on, his his drawing style. This is a Frank Netter is a very prominent um, doc, you know, MD in the fifties and forties, and he 
really did very detailed drawings of all the anatomy stuff that we need to learn when we become medical doctors. But, you know, some of us might want to do that. Um, but that might be something you want to check out to further better visualize what you're learning. So Nether is really good. Gilroy is also really good. This, uh, she is a German lady. Uh, and the Germans draw a little bit different than the Americans. You know, they're a little bit more industrial, I guess, or something, engineering. And the Americans, there's a little more color to a Frank Netter book. So I would think it would be great if you guys want to check that out a little bit. This is also great. This is a cadaver atlas that I studied heavily with in chiropractic school, which basically has cadaver pictures and then labels of what is what on the cadaver. That's very, very at, you know, talk about accuracy. There you really got the accuracy. And then these are more textbooks down here. This is uh, uh, the Bio 2 Anatomy textbook. If you guys go to Bio 2 later on, Martini, that's most likely that's what you use. And then this is the textbook that my, originally my work, my, my class is based on, the Introduction Structure and Function, but it's also a German book uh, that I used for that because I think it's very well organized. Um, but I want to make sure you guys have that because that probably will help a lot in studying these, especially this next, you know, the mu muscles and the bones uh, are, are heavy, heavy anatomy. Uh, when we get further than to the, um, when you get further than to the heart and to the, to the brain and so forth, well, the brain also is a fair amount of anatomy, but a lot of them is more than physiology of what the things do and how does it work. So this is definitely your heavy anatomy portion right here from terminology like that. Good, so that's what I wanted to talk about and that's all I have. Is there any questions uh, from your side that you wanna bring up or comments? I have a question. Um, yeah. This week, I noticed that the label and color assignments, they have like, it's lower extremities. The page, it says um, gluteus maximus and it'll say O, I, and A. What oh, is wait that referring on the to? oh wait a minute that's a mistake hold on hold on let me double check thanks for bringing that up because right now we are on this week right you're talking about this one um the appendicular skeleton no no i i guess i'm on next week it's oh, okay, okay. It. then we're in good shape then we're in good shape no this <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's, sorry. It's, it's, right. it's lower extremities. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, there when you get when we get into the extremities, you're getting in, in the muscles, you're getting into booklet three. Okay, okay. And when you look at you said uh, when you look at booklet three, uh, then you, when you look at muscles, you have attachment sides of muscles, right? Oh, the outer inner. Okay. Right. And so you have an origin and an insertion and an action. And so let me go to that. Bill. So when you don't do the, the muscle labeling, yeah, I think that's it's the one. Yeah, it's a <laughs> and so when you do those, I have some additional work on your end that I want you to fill out uh, those, you know, for example, here we got the trapezius, which is this muscle here. Yeah. Right? So you follow the muscle, right? And then you say, oh, origin is, is what's the attachment side? Uh, on the bone is one is the origin which is the stable portion so the origin on the trapezius is the spinal stuff here from the occiput to t12 and then because that part don't move it doesn't move when the muscle contracts what moves when the muscle contracts is this stuff out here where it in, and, and it goes in so it goes around the scapula shoulder the, the spine of the scapula and then all the way to the front actually the clavicle and when it contracts it does all these different motions and so in this muscle, the origin is, and you can look it up in a book, it's the, it's, you know, it says, oh, origin. So you, you just, you can copy that, but it's the stable portion of the muscle attachment to the bone, the thing that is anchoring the muscle. And then from there, it can move on, move something. And so then the insertion is this part here where the muscle anchors into the spine of the scapula and the clavicle and the acromion process too, I think probably. Uh, and so that will be the insertion here. And so you type that in here. And then the action is listed of all the actions underneath the muscle, what that muscle can do. Okay. And so you list that as well from the booklets or the videos, depending. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks for asking that because I should come back next week. And <laughs> now we have a little preview on that. 
Anybody else got a question? Well, if not, we can call it a day. I have a question, but um, I want to talk to you at the end of the class. I don't know if you have time. I have a couple minutes. Yeah. If we're, okay. We have to be at about 10 30. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Allison, you got something? Okay. No, good. I already asked my question. Thanks. Sorry. I've... Oh, okay. Good. I just see, see the hand. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's cool. I'm trying to catch all I can. Well, then we are good, huh? I, I wish you guys a good week. Shoot me a text if you got something. And other than that, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.